If you want, you can also record. Okay, thank you. Now, that's a good So the question was about uh, Gita, Bhagavad Gita, verse seven, uh, chapter seven, verse twenty-four. Ah, abhyaktam bhyakti pamanam, bhyakti mapanam, manyante mama buddhaya. Param bhava majananto mama vyaya manuttama. Okay, avyaktam non manifested. Vyakti manifestation. Apanam obtained. Maniante, they think. So they think that from non manifested, uh, God becomes manifested. Okay. Mam abuddhaya. People who have no intelligence. Param bhavam ajananto. They don't know my supreme nature. Mama vyaya manuttamam. Which is eternal and uh, there is nothing beyond it. So this is um not applying to the concept of avatar is that clear mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes that, that's interesting here krishna is speaking about bhagavan that uh, as the origin of the Brahman. Now, um, Bhagavan is always there, is eternal and supreme. In fact, in another verse of Gita, uh, Krishna will say, uh, Brahmanahi Pratishtaham, I am the foundation of Brahman. I am the basis, the origin of Brahman. So there is no doubt that Bhagavan is the origin of Brahman. So there is nothing before Bhagavan. The problem is that people who have a material mentality, they think that all the bodies first are non-manifested, then they become manifested, and then non-manifested again. This is what Krishna was explaining, in, the, for example, in the second chapter, when he speaks about uh, the Bhutas, the living beings, the, the uh, embodied beings. The first, they are not manifested, then they manifest, and then they become non Now, the avatar is already manifested, on the um what to say um uh you know in, in in the eternal existence the avatar i mean krishna always exists but appears to take birth and and you know manifest himself in a particular period of time and then he becomes non-manifest, non-visible. But it doesn't mean that it stopped existing. Okay, we can make an example. Let's see, let's go practical, so it will help. Now, we were discussing about uh, the Leelas being like uh, theater performances. Okay. Now, let's make an example <laughs> with, with Shakespeare. Okay. You know, Shakespeare is someone, you know, something that, that everybody has, has heard about. Um, let's take a, a theater piece, which is probably the most famous of uh, Shakespeare's work, which is Romeo and Juliet. Okay. You know, Romeo and Juliet have become, what to say, uh, dictionary words, you know, especially 
you know in india they say oh he's a romeo like you know because he's uh, he's trying to be the romantic uh, you know dashing uh, uh playboy you know so romeo and juliet is the um story written by shakespeare now when there is a play in a theater that is showing the story of Romeo and Juliet. It starts, you know, the, the, the play starts, you know, the curtains open, and then we have the beginning of the story. Now, uh, uh, this uh, Romeo was born in a family, and Juliet was born in an uh, enemy family and this and that and this happened and that happened and then they died but Romeo and Juliet never die even after the play is over you know and and the the curtain falls and you know they look like uh, they're all dead on the on the scene you know the, then the curtain comes up again and all the actors uh, are there standing and smiling and bowing to the public and then uh, you know next uh, day there will be another performance you you yeah. understand the, the example yeah. yeah so the story the idea of romeo and juliet you know it, it's it's not that uh, um it, it was non manifested before the story is always there. Even the, the, the template for the two unhappy lovers have, has always been there in, in you know, the human mind. It, it, you know, Shakespeare was just one who got this idea and wrote, an, you know, wrote about it in a nice way. But the idea, he was definitely not the first one who thought that two lovers could be born in the wrong families and you know they 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 died because they they couldn't be together i mean this is something that is you know an archetype mm -hmm. you know shakespeare even didn't invent the idea so you know in each representation each play you know in different theaters are just the enactment of the play so the lila is that, um, you know, Krishna is always there. The Bhagavan always there. There, is, there was never a time when Krishna was not there. Mm -hmm. But still, he was not manifested on this earth before 5,000 years ago. You know, 10 years before Vasudeva and Devaki married, Krishna was not manifested on this earth as an avatar. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that he was not, he didn't exist. Yeah. So that's why I was telling you, you know, <laughs> this verse does not apply to the avatar. It applies to the tatwa. Mm -hmm. The tatwa, we can say the Krishna tatwa, Vishnu tatwa, Shiva tatwa. Ta the tatwa is the existence that is eternal, that is ontologically eternal. It, it, you cannot say that there was any time, there will be any time when it will not be there. Mm -hmm. Because God is existence. So the, the, the Shastras make the example of, of God uh, as a, a Brahmati, Paramatmati, Bhagavan, you know, uh, it is Shabdhyate. Uh, so it, it, the God is called Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan, right? But it is one, it's one substance. 
Tatomya, uh, that is uh, the, the, the Bhagavatam is explaining. It, and this substance is jnana. This, this uh, uh, tattva is actually knowledge, is consciousness. Satchit Ananda. You, you understand? Yeah. Okay. So now the, the Shastras make the example of Bhagavan like the, the, the planet of the sun, the, the, the body, celestial body of the sun. The Paramatma is compared to the reflection of the sun in all the, the uh, water vessels and on, on, over the head of each person in the world. The, the disc, the sun disc. You cannot say that the sun disc is different from the sun as a body, celestial body. It's the same, <laughs> but still it's not the same because you see the, the, the sun on top of your head, you know, at, at midday. Everybody in the same area will see the sun on top of their own head. In the same way, you have a, 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 a mirror and you can see the sun in your mirror. You know, but anybody, anywhere, they, they can, you know, keep a mirror and they see that the, the sun is there in their mirror. So this is the concept of Paramatma. Paramatma is God present in each being and it, within each atom even. Okay. And in the same way, the Brahman is compared to the sun rays to the radiance of the sun. So when you say the sun is entering my room, uh, <laughs> what do you mean exactly? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the, the avyaktam, the Brahman is avyaktam, not manifested in the sense that it's everywhere. You, you cannot actually focus your, your eyes on, on, the, on the Brahman. Because it has not distinguished a form. The Brahman is both Purusha and Prakriti. Paramatma is also Purusha and Prakriti. Bhagavan is also Purusha and Prakriti. But how? So it seems to materialistic people that Bhagavan is easier to understand. But it's actually the opposite. The problem is that materialistic people think they can understand Bhagavan. <laughs> uh, that's not true. They, they cannot understand Bhagavan. Because Bhagavan can only be understood through Paramatma and Brahman. If they don't understand, realize Brahman and Paramatma, they will only project their own idea on the, the, the concept of Bhagavan. So, 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 yeah. Please, tell. No, no, I was just affirming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see the, the commentary. One of the most important words in this verse is Bhava, with the long first A which means existence, birth, nature, and purpose. Another important concept is expressed by the words avyaktam vyaktim, non-manifested manifestation, that may appear as, as a contradiction in terms that are meant to expand our understanding, like so many similar statements and definitions in the scriptures. When two apparently oppos opposite terms are expressed deliberately, we should utilize the contrast to move beyond duality and see how they can be reconciled in a wider sense. The definition Abu Daya, those who have no intelligence, 
is a further step in the crescendo that started with Rita Gyanam, those whose knowledge is confused, and moved to Alpamedhasam, those who have little intelligence, and will culminate in Mudha, fools. <laughs> so from verse 20, 23, 24, 25. It is evident here that Krishna gives great importance to the quality of intelligence and equates it to the level of evolution and realization in the individual soul. You know, a funny thing that happened to me just a, a couple of days ago, you know, I, I found, I, I posted um, one, um, uh, uh, you know, so, something on, on LinkedIn because it came to me, you know, I found a, a interesting, nicer uh, image uh, about the eagle and the chicken. So I wrote uh, um, some eagles dress as eagles, some chickens dress as chickens. There are also eagles, the chickens who dress as eagles uh, uh, and uh, eagles that dress as chickens. Who are you and why is the issue? You know, so if you have a little bit of you know wider mentality, you can understand I was not really talking about birds. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. Eagle <laughs> is someone who is very powerful, very intelligent, very um perceptive very you know has a penetrating intelligence and you know can do things but when the eagle dresses as a chicken uh the eagle is going on stealth mode because the eagle is not stupid you know so it, it doesn't uh, want to attract too much attention on himself if he's in a difficult place so you know like the wolf will, will hide among the, the the dogs for example you know so that was the idea of the eagle dressed as a chicken so you know if you're not strong enough it's better you lay low until you're strong enough to do what you need to do you know and the, on the other side a chicken that is dressing as an eagle <laughs> uh, is exactly the opposite because, uh, you know, it doesn't have the, the, the strength to behave like an eagle, but he's going to attract a lot of uh, aggressions. You know, lots of people will want to fight with him, you know, go to war against him because they think he's actually an eagle. I mean, he is, the chicken is not going to be able to fight back. But because the, the chicken thinks, oh, I'm such a big bird, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, he puts himself in a difficult situation unnecessarily. It's, it's like uh, the cat that is, you know, putting on a, a, a lion uh, wig. You know, it's like, yeah, right. Yeah, you know, that's a meow. It's not a roar, you know. And, uh, you know, I, many people actually showed they could understand. But one guy commented, he wrote back and commented, I dress as a human. I'm a maid, 35 years old. You know, what? What? <laughs> and that is called Stula Buddhi. <laughs> you know what Stula Buddhi means? You know, gross intelligence that is not subtle, you know, just like, yeah, duh, you know, right, but that's not what I meant. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's very <laughs> elementary. So why, why should, should you tell me that you dress as a human because of a human being? Like, oh, well, you didn't get the, the, the point. Yeah. So this is the same, you know, Abu Dhaya, you know, Rita Gyana, Alpha Medhasam, Buddha. You know, Krishna does not mean words so much. You know, we should not be afraid of telling people 
when they're being stupid. You know, because another famous meme is that, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you've seen it, you know, correct uh, a wise man, he will appreciate you. Correct a fool, he will get angry. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, if you correct, uh, you know, intelligent man, you say, oh, thank you. We are right. You know, that, that you, you know, <laughs> if you correct a fool, you know, like, uh, uh, okay. Of course, when you correct someone, you must be correct. Because if you go, <laughs> try to correct someone that is actually right, then you are the fool. But it's okay. It's okay. You know, that's not, <laughs> we, we, we shouldn't go, go too, too far you know branching off too far about that so again apanam apanam refers to an achievement a success a higher step of evolution and therefore cannot be applied to the supreme lord who is always eternally liberated and in full control of everything people with a materialistic frame of mind are unable to understand the eternal and supreme existence of a reality they cannot see with their own limited eyes and they try to superimpose their own limitations to the transcendental level of reality this mentality is called mayavada following illusion because it entails the conclusion that illusion is more powerful than god suggesting that krishna vishnu narayan himself is under the control of illusion or even that God takes a material body, an illusory temporary form made of ordinary material elements like any ordinary individual, subject to ignorance and sufferings. Of course, this conclusion is not supported by any genuine scripture. It is rather created by a material misunderstanding about the simultaneous oneness and difference of Atman and Brahman that remains inconceivable for the material senses, mind, and intellect. Acintya beda beda tatu. Some less informed persons incorrectly apply the definition of Mayavada by relying on heavy prejudice, often confusing it with the concept of Advaita, and pointing at Adi Shankar as a teacher and propagator of Mayavadism. They do not know or they do not want to notice that Adi Shankar begins his commentary on the Bhagavad Gita with the unequivocal statement Narayana Paravyakta. Narayana Vishnu is supreme and transcendental. Besides having written many wonderful texts in glorification of Govinda, as for example, the famous Bhaja Govindam song and of Krishna as in the famous Gita Mahatmya and so on. Well, we can also mention the Jagannathastaka, which is also <laughs> very interesting. Yeah. The reason of such offensive confusion is the material perception of reality that is based on material identification and attachments. This creates a strong dualistic mentality based on partisan bias and blind allegiance to a particular camp which in turn motivates unintelligent people to systematically vilify the opposite camp even with unfounded accusations in dirty politics all sorts of mudslinging goes on even if politicians have to concoct and manufacture imaginative new types of mud to throw at their adversaries. Another verse, 9-11, very similar to this one, repeats the same concept about the Mayavada faulty theory. Avajananti manmudha manushim tanu mashrita parambhavam majananto mama bhuta maheshwaram Fools do not understand me when I manifest my human appearance because they do not know my supreme nature by which I control all forms of existence. Because in their experience, all the things are at first non-manifested, then become manifest and finally disappear again 
like we said, chapter 2, verse 28. Materialistic people apply the same criteria to the Supreme Law and think that he has come to existence at a certain moment in time. In this regard, we should also clarify that the expression incarnation is inappropriate when referring to the manifestation of a divine avatar, as it derives from Latin carn or caro, meaning flesh, and indicates an ordinary earthly form. Mainstream contemporary academia tends to consider the historical existence of a religious teacher as an essential validation of the authority of his teachings. But there is no logical sense in that idea. The validity of a system of knowledge should be in its actual contents and merit, and not in the exhibition of archaeological relics that might be connected to an objective time and place and person. There have always been, and there are still, many individuals whose position in time and space can be fully demonstrated, but who have never contributed to the patrimony of knowledge and wisdom of the world, or even have spread dangerous misconceptions or defective theories. Hinduism or Sanatana Dharma is different from the so-called historical religions, because it did not begin at a certain point of time, but it constitutes the eternal and universal principles of ethics and spirituality, the verifiable scientific knowledge of reality, both objective and subjective, and the fundamental consciousness that is sometimes called conscience, logic, or common sense, but that we call Buddha Yoga, or utilization of intelligence. We could say that Sanatana Dharma is a natural religion for all human beings that can accommodate comfortably all categories and types of mentalities, gradually engaging them towards the direction of progressive understanding, awareness, happiness, and harmony. So this is exactly like the eternal existence of the Tattva, you know, the Krishna Tattva. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the so same way... Okay. From time to time, the fundamental principles of Sanatana Dharma are presented anew according to various perspectives, especially considering time, place, circumstances, and audience. But such presentations are to be studied and understood in the light of a direct personal realization by each and every individual. It is in such light that we must understand the transcendental personality of Krishna. Earlier, chapter 4, verses 6 to 9, Krishna has explained that he appears periodically to re-establish the eternal principles of Dharma, generally translated as religion. But he is not subject to the oblivion that limits the individual souls. Why? because Krishna is not an individual soul. In this chapter, he has clearly stated that he is the essence of all existence, the taste of water, the strength of those who are strong, the light of the sun and the moon, and the eternal origin of everything that exists. How can this transcendental existence have a beginning and the end in the material dimension? It is not logic. It is true that Krishna manifests, manifests, Sri Jami, chapter 4, verse 7, particular forms as avatars that are specifically suited for a mission. But such forms are actually eternal or independently existing, and they only become visible and non-visible cyclically appearing to take birth and to disappear, not unlike ordinary individual souls. But with an important difference, all these forms are made of pure spiritual energy, perfectly controlled by the consciousness. In fact, they are consisting of consciousness only. The discover, discoveries offered by one of the most recent fields of research in Western science particle physics, can help us to understand this mystery. 
Subatomic physicists have found that all matter actually consists of energy organized according to specific vibrational frequencies arranged in a very precise plan that are sensitive to various factors, including magnetic fields, heat, etc. This principle of a vibrational energy matrix for the material universe explains the functioning of the Vedic science of yoga based on the control of subtle sound and the biomagnetic energy fields created by the subtle nervous system of the nadis, marmas, and chakras. It also explains all the so-called paranormal phenomena and many other things that conventional science is still unable to account for. So this is, on the spiritual level, this is done by the spiritual energy, yoga maya. On the material level, this is done by Mahamaya. On the spiritual level, the same, exact same thing is done by Yoga Maya. This is why the uh, Shakti is required, is already present, existing in Vishnu. You, you understand? You're following. Yeah. Okay. We continue. It is the consciousness as Atman Brahman that controls the vibrational frequencies of matter. The more powerful, vast, and deep is the consciousness, the greater is the control over matter. And there is no doubt that Krishna is the most powerful, vast, and deep consciousness, being the origin of Brahman and Paramatma, as explicitly stated in Bhagavad Gita, Brahmanohi Pratishtaham, 14.27. Sarvasya Chahamri Disa 13.28. The individual living entities that are transcendental in nature, just like the Supreme Lord, but limited in quantity, if not in quality, also have a certain amount of controlling power in a measure that is directly proportional to the evolution of their consciousness, characterized in ascending order by material gunas, by the material gunas of tamas, darkness, rajas, passion, sattva, goodness, vishuddha sattva, pure goodness, and the spiritual qualities of sat, chit, ananda, vigraha. The manifestations controlled by the spiritual principle, purusha, are accordingly the bodies of less evolved creatures. Oops. <coughs> <laughs> we have a battery issue. Okay. I'm going to plug it in. One minute. Oh, go in there. Okay. And <laughs> we are back. Okay. Okay, the manifestations controlled by the spiritual principle, Purusha, are according to the bodies of less evolved creatures such as plants and less conscious animals, Tamas, human beings at various levels of evolution, Rajas, the subordinate Devas, Sattva, and the five main personalities of Godhead known as Pancha Devata, Vishnu, Shiva, Devi, Brahma, Surya, and Ganesh, that are situated in Vishuddha Sattva. All these forms appearing in the universe are sometimes manifested and sometimes non manifested. Even the first Vishnu avatars, such as Kshirdakashai Vishnu and Garbhadakashai Vishnu, appear and disappear with the cycles, cycles of creation and dissolution. While the original Supreme Personality of Godhead is not a particular form, but the non manifested essence of all existence, Sachidananda Vigraha and thus exists eternally without any change. This still you know, it, it gives some idea about the, the concepts of Purusha and Prakriti, but still it's not easy to understand the, the, the difference and non-difference. This last section, this last line, uh... Uh, while the original supreme personality of Godhead is not a particular form, but the non-manifested essence of all existence. So, yeah. 
can't we say that originally uh, the principle or bhagwan is like without form only no 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 i was say uh, i'm saying it's not a particular form it, it is a form it has a form but it's not a particular form it's a, all the forms like you remember you you see you, you not you've not read them yet but um, when you see when when krishna manifests the the virat rupa to arjun you know the the bhagavad gita is describing that arjuna sees all these forms in one way mm -hmm. So this means it doesn't have a particular form. It has all the forms. Okay. But it, because it's it's not conceivable to our intellect, how that happens? Okay. Particular <laughs> entails the concept of duality. Because particular means not that. It is this and not that. It is not that. How can you describe the form of non-duality? It's not a form that is different from another form. It must be a form that contains all the forms i know it's not easy <laughs> <laughs> it, that's why it's called achintya adoption yeah. you know because if it was easy <laughs> you know it would not be called that but when we say all form at one place we say virat roop is a material manifestation or... Yeah, yes. you know but if it uh, if it is so with the material manifestation how much more so it will be for a spiritual manifestation <laughs> because the spiritual manifestation not only contains all the material manifestations but also all the spiritual manifestations so it's even more so <laughs> you know it is said that in geometry a point has no dimensions. Mm -hmm. Bindu is unlimited. To understand the, the concept of Bindu, the concept of infinite, unlimited, it's not easy. And it's still in one point. It's a point that contains everything. It's impossible to understand intellectually. Yeah. That is why it's called transcendental, because it transcends. It transcends time, space, individuality, duality. You know, it, it transcends all this. It's it's a uh, uh, it, it's it's everything that exists and ever existed and will always exist. How do we relate with that? <laughs> you understand? Slightly. <laughs> Slightly. Good, good, good. It's, a, it's a good step. You know, in fact, when at the end, the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna will say, Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma. Nasachati, Nakamchati, Samak Sarvesha Bhutesha, Mad Bhaktim Labhate Param. It means that you can actually be situated in real devotion only when you attain that level of Brahma Bhutta. The realization. Tell. No, no, I'm just affirming that. Yeah, well, yeah you know, this is. Uh, one, 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 Real devotion begins. Exactly. This uh, um, understanding, this realization of the Bindu, you know, the, the unlimited transcendental existence is the realization of Brahman. 
is called non-manifested <coughs> not because it's uh, uh, it doesn't exist. People confuse non-manifested with not non-existing. You know, it's a uh, it's a problem. You know, like uh, most people confuse the idea of detachment with the, the idea of not caring for something. You know, not, not bothering, not caring, not being interested. No, it's a, it's a different thing. Anyway, you know, it, it will sink. It will sink. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a gradual process. Realization is something that comes, you know, instantly, but after a preparation, long preparation. Mm -hmm. You know, realization, enlightenment, moksha, is like becoming free from hunger. You know, you've been eating and eating and eating, you're still hungry. Then, snap! <laughs> it, instantly, you're not hungry anymore. You're free from hunger. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that doesn't come because someone is telling you that now you're free from hunger. <laughs> it's a realization. You say, oh, I'm not hungry anymore. Oh, okay. You know. And, and it doesn't come by itself without any study, any meditation. Just like you cannot become free from hunger by just, you know, not eating. You, you understand the difference? Yeah. So when we talk about this Bindu, you said this is Brahman realization. When yes. Bindu, then what is Bhagwan? Because you are seeing everything there, right? What Bhagwan, like different from this Bindu? Is it a particular Bhagavan manifestation? Different from this Bindu. Bhagwan is the origin of the Bindu. <laughs> the problem is, you know, Bhagavan is so difficult to understand. In fact, the Gita Krishna is say only through bhakti someone can understand me. You 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 know you can try to squeeze your brain as much as you like. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Yeah. You just can understand nobody can understand through intellectual effort mm -hmm. yeah. so just accept it you know and if you develop sufficient devotion you'll actually feel it you 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 perceive it directly you bypass the brain if you try to go through the brain it's just like uh, trying to to pass the ocean through a pipe <laughs> it's not happening. Some water will come, sure. Yeah, but you know, it's, uh, you you cannot understand the concept of ocean through a pipe. So just you know, go and swim. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. There is a science to yoga, yeah, but no science, no yoga, no technique can give you realization. Realization comes from, you know, but this is why you see the Chinna master is going around with her hand in, 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 her, in her hand, you know, the head in, in, in her hand. It's, the head is not required, you know, the head is required to come up to a certain point. But then you have to, 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 you know, to do the jump. If you're not willing or ready or able to make the jump, you're not, never going to get there. A, a, another example, uh, again, talking about swimming, you know, I can talk to you for years about how to swim. We can do a lot of practice on dry land. 
<laughs> you cannot swim on dry land. If you really want to know what swimming is, you have to jump in. Who, who wants to do that? Who's ready to do that, able, willing to do that? that person will attain god and why you do that you do it out of love out of bhakti why, why, why else should you jump in jump into the ocean are you stupid <laughs> you know just who you know why should i do that i do that because of love you know so krishna says only through love i can be understood so <laughs> we we keep talking, we keep studying, definitely. But at some point, you'll have to jump. Okay. Okay. Any yeah, questions? Let let that sink in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good that exactly. I record. Exactly. Right? Go through it. <laughs> Yeah, well, you see, um, Hinduism, Vedic knowledge is so incredible, you know, that uh, we can actually, uh, you know, we, we have to be careful not to um, underestimate it. You know, lots of people can can make this mistake of underestimating. A, another another um, point, similar point, is that uh, another example that um, you know I I saw a few days back, a few days ago. It's about uh, I think chapter fifteen, um, verse five about the difference of the concept of prayer in uh, in the hindu vedic idea dimension because you know there was someone who posted you remember on the group oh my friend is very sick please pray for him okay this is abrahamic You know, because what do you think? Because if you pray, then God will change your karma. Why? Why should you? <laughs> why? Why should God change your karma if you pray? You know, th this is a typical, typical Abrahamic idea that uh, you know uh, karma doesn't exist and reincarnation doesn't exist. So. We are all totally, you know, uh, impotent, you know, and we are at the mercy of God's whims, you know. But that's not uh, that's not a fact. Let Let me see if I can find it. Nadate, because otherwise, nadate. Bing, let's see. Okay, not fine. <laughs> uh, the, the, okay, the, there is this um, this verse. Ah, here it is. Yeah. Oh, five fifteen, not fifteen five. Oops. Nada te kasicit papam na chayva sukritam vibhu agyane na vritam gyanam te na muhyanti jantava. Okay. Verse chapter five, verse fifteen. You you've read this already, right? Yeah. So this is interesting. Five fifteen. Because what, what's the point of praying? The the difference in praying is in the in the Hindu Vedic system. Praying means meditating on God, remembering God associating with god and when you remember god when you associate with god you get the strength and the power 
to solve your problems yourself. You get inspiration. This is what the Gayatri Mantra is saying. You know, it's saying prachoda, na prachoda yet. Let it inspire us. When we pray God, yeah, we can also mention, oh, yeah, well, we would like, uh, you know, victory. We would like uh, prosperity. We would like, uh, you know, like that. But it's not that we are asking God to change our karma and give us victory if it is not victory what we should get. You know, we are calling the power of victory that is in God and we absorb this power of victory so that we can go on and win. You see the difference? Yeah. You know, when when this, this family, especially when we worship Mother Durga, you know, Jayam Devi, you know, Rupam Devi, you know, that, that's, they like me, give, give me victory, give me this, give me that, doesn't mean that God will change your karma. So this verse, na adatte kasichit papam, na cha eva sukritam, vibhu, means God is not interested in the, uh, you know, sins or credit or virtues of people. This is one of the problems that uh, you know Abrahamics don't understand and this is why so many people in the Abrahamic cultures become atheists because they pray and they don't get what they were praying for duh <laughs> you're not supposed to get it like that you pray God to get rain you know and then you meditate on God and the rain and you are attracting the rain because God is inside you. You don't have to go somewhere else to talk with God. You, you see the point? Yes. I know it's difficult. You know, it, it requires a lot more qualifications. You know, it's very easy to be, to be a Christian. Or a Muslim. You can be a chicken. Actually, you know, it's better for them to have chickens than have eagles. You know, Christians and Muslims don't want eagles. They want chickens. <laughs> <laughs> the point is Hinduism is for eagles. Okay, chickens can also participate, but they, they shouldn't... Uh, you know, dress as eagles because otherwise they'll just embarrass themselves. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, you know, now that day means that God is not interested in punishing the sins, mistakes, or imperfections of anyone, or in rewarding those who try to please Him by virtuous actions. Karma is not a punishment or reward by God, it is simply a natural physical law of the universe, like gravity, etc. God does not have a chosen people and certainly does not order the annihilation or persecution or punishment of those who worship him in the wrong ways or do not worship him at all. All the mess in human history that is ascribed to religious differences is actually created merely by confused and ignorant human beings as confirmed by the word muhenti derived from muha. Moha, confusion, illusion. Such confusion can be cleared not by engaging in religious wars, but simply by making sufficient knowledge, jnana, available to the people in general. So whenever you find someone who wants to eliminate the wrong spiritual or ideological conclusions by taking physical action against persons or books, etc., you know that they're certainly not following Krishna's instructions. Physical action is only justified against the physical attack by aggressors and not for any other reason. So, uh, you know, the, the point is that if you have sufficient 
you know, uh, understanding, realization, if you are on a, a sufficient level of evolution, you can understand these things. Otherwise, you know, you pray <laughs> for something and there is, you know, you, you cannot have any certainty why, you know, about getting it or not. Because let's say <coughs> two people, you know, they're, they're, you know, two people are, uh, are um, uh, appearing for uh, a job. One job, two people, two candidates. Both of them are going to pray, <laughs> right? Yeah. Why one gets it and the other doesn't? <coughs> you know, people, the one who doesn't get the job will get will lose his faith. Oh, I pray so much. God didn't help. You know, or like your father is, is dying because, you know, he's, his body is totally damaged, you know, by years of, you know, disease and or accidents. Right? You're praying, please pray, God, please, please save my father, save my father. Then the father, <laughs> you know, what to do. It cannot be forever. And then, you know, they lose their faith. We are stupid. You know, if someone is in danger of death, you know, the Mrityan Jaya Mantra is useful if he hears it. So the person who needs, uh, you know, to meditate on, on the Mrityan Jaya Mantra, they will get the strength, inspiration, and everything to actually vanquish death themselves. It's not that. You know, Shiva is going to come and say, okay, he'll not die, you know. Uh, no, it doesn't work like that. We can send good energy, good wishes, good blessings. But that's not the same thing. They have to do their job. You know, for example, you are going to sit for an exam. You know, I can help you. You know, I can... You know, help you in revising. I can, you know, give you some some coffee. <laughs> you know, I can, you know, take care of nobody's disturbing you while you sleep or whatever. But you have to sit for the exam. It's not that someone else, you know, because I help you, you don't need to go and sit for the exam. You, you see the difference? Yes. So prayer is um, okay, but we need to understand it's it's a very different uh, different uh, uh, concept. You know, prayer in the in the Vedic, the, the original Hindu Vedic idea is, is different. It's tano uh, prachodiyat. Let him inspire us. Oh. Tatsavitur Varyam Bhargo, the Vasyadimahi, Dio, Dio, we meditate. You know, Tanopra so that we can be inspired. This is why the, the, the Gayatri is the main mantra, you know, during Diksha, because it's the most important mantra, the mother of all Vedas. We need to understand that we should become inspired by God. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is uh, is that useful? Hopefully. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. So, so, no. No. Okay. <laughs> Another hour has gone. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for next time and thanks for your time. Oh, actually, thanks to you because you are helping me uh, in um, you know doing this work. It's um, actually very inspiring for me as well.
but it's so kind of you that like you know if only one person is also there you are so much enthusiastic to explain that's and right. spend well, time. you know that's <laughs> That's the idea, but uh, you know, hopefully, I can also put it on YouTube so even other people. Yeah, that's kind of. Thing. But at least the one person is actually very useful. You know, like in the Gita Mahatmya. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm comparing Arjuna to the calf. Yes, yes. You know, and Krishna because the, the Krishna is is the cow. You know, Krishna is the sorry, Krishna is a coward, but the Gopa, Gopal. And the, the cow is the Vedas. So, you know, due to the affection for uh, for the calf, the cow is giving milk. Yeah. So there must be some calf somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Even one is <laughs> Okay, we'll keep it that way. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for that. Jai Jagannath.